Have you ever tried to hide your faith? I mean, I've done that so many times where I've worked at jobs and been in the lunchroom, and it's been time to pray grace. And I've thought, you know what? I'm going to do this kind of secretly so nobody notices. Or the worst is on plane. You remember way back when, when we used to fly on these aeroplanes through the air to travel to far away distant lands? It feels like a decade ago since I've done that. Anyways, I think back to a time where I was sitting on a plane, and as a priest, I'm required to pray what's called the Liturgy of the Hours. So it's a series of prayers throughout the day, following the Psalms primarily. And the thing is, with the Liturgy of the Hours, you have to make the sign of the cross uh, several times, you know, every, every... So I'm on this plane in this tiny chair, and, I'm, and the first time I make the sign of the cross, and I'm just trying to be discreet and not elbow the person next to me. And the second time, I'm, like, you know, just casually trying to scratch in the vicinity of my forehead and my belly button and, you know, kind of stretch it out a little bit. And then by the third time, I'm like swatting away flies. And, you know, as if there's this swarm of mosquitoes that got on board. And by the fourth time, I've just given up. It's like, well, God will understand if I don't, if I don't make the sign of the cross. Besides, I don't want to be weird. You know, like, I don't want to be one of those crazy Catholics. Now, I'm already dressed like a priest, so it's pretty obvious. However, I don't want to go public with my faith. There's a part of me that wants to stay hidden. And I wonder, does anybody else feel uncomfortable when it comes to going public with your faith? You know, if, if there's anybody else out there, you're like me, going public with your faith feels a bit uncomfortable, I just want you to type yes right now in the comments. Go ahead and do that. Even if some of the time you feel a discomfort about sharing your faith with others, type yes. I just want to say thank you to all of you who, who just put that out there, who admitted that, yeah, this is hard because you've, you've given us permission. I think at some level, we all struggle with this. And underlying uh, this discomfort is fear. I can't speak for you, but I'll speak for myself. The fear of rejection, the fear of being judged, the fear of being treated differently. All of these fears are working against me going public with my faith. Now, we've been living in a season of fear for the last three months. There's been all kinds of fear. Fear of getting sick, fear of death, fear of economic crisis. And those are very real fears that for some are very much still at the forefront. But today, I want to zero in and talk specifically about the fear of sharing our faith. Now, the thing about this fear is if you want, you can totally ignore it. (laughs) You, you can just you know what, I'm not going to go public with my faith. I'm just going to live a private faith. And you're good. But the problem is, Jesus doesn't leave us that option. He's called us to share our faith publicly. I love the phrase that Pope Francis uses, and I've quoted the Pope recently. I'm going to quote him again uh, in this famous document that he wrote early on in his papacy called The Joy of the Gospel. He says it this way, in virtue of their baptism, all the members of the people of God have become missionary disciples. So every single person, if if you're baptized, you are a missionary disciple. I just want to break that open. There's two words, missionary disciple. A disciple is somebody who is a follower of Jesus, somebody who's trying to walk in his footsteps, someone who is trying to become like Jesus, grow in holiness. And a missionary is someone who is sent, someone who has a purpose, who is is going public with their faith, sharing that faith with other people. And the Pope's point is, you can't have one without the other. The two are necessarily linked together. We are called to be missionary disciples. We're called 
to go public with our faith. Now again, that might stir up a little bit of fear inside of you, and I get that. I can totally relate, and in fact, Jesus himself can relate to that also. When he was talking to his first group of followers, and we read about that today in our gospel, he's challenging them to go public with their faith, but he anticipates their response. He says this in so many ways, fear no one. Do not be afraid as you share your faith. Now for us, as I said, the consequences, we could experience rejection. It could impact our reputation. But for them, the stakes were higher. I mean, thousands upon thousands of them were persecuted. Ten out of his first twelve apostles were martyred for the faith. And yet Jesus presses on. He says, I need you, I'm calling you to share this faith, this message of good news. Whatever was covered up, whatever was secret, this message that perhaps has only been whispered, I am challenging you. What was covered needs to be uncovered. What was hidden needs to go public. What was whispered needs to be shouted from the rooftops. And what is this message of good news that Jesus longs for every single person to hear? I love su- summarizing it in these three simple points. It's easy for me to remember, and I just think of the three persons of the Trinity. So first, God the Father loves you as you are right now. Without a single thing being different, God loves you. And yet, we might feel this disconnect. The world is so messed up. My heart is so messed up. There's there's so much stuff. I might feel shame because of sin. I might feel so broken. And regardless of your past, Jesus died for you to save you. And furthermore, even better than that, is that he sends his spirit to come and be present inside each one of us, to bring us peace, to bring us purpose in this life. This message of good news, Jesus longs for every single person to hear it. And he's inviting us to be part of those missionary disciples who will share it, who will go public with others. Now again, like those first apostles, there's probably some fear, some hesitation about doing that. And so Jesus, he starts talking about sparrows and how, you know, a sparrow, back in those days you could buy two sparrows for one penny. So they weren't, uh, they weren't that important in that culture. And yet, even if, a single one were to go down. God the Father would know. God the Father would would care. And so even if we experience some form of rejection, God the Father is with you. He knows. Jesus said, so do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. In other words, you're more valuable than anything else in all of creation. You don't have to be afraid. Now, I want to make this really concrete for us because I've heard lots of people talking about, oh yeah, yeah, you got to share your faith. Uh, You got to evangelize. That's a big word. But I want to make it very simple and concrete. You see, back in the day, I used to think, I put so much pressure on myself. Like, I have to take a person from A to Z in a single conversation. I meet a total stranger who's an ardent atheist, and in five minutes, I have to bring them from atheism to a place of completely surrendering their life to Jesus. And what if God is just saying, hey, yes, I need you to share your faith. Yes, I need you to to talk. It involves speaking. But what if it's a question of bringing, helping somebody move from A to B. 
or from B to C. So perhaps somebody who is completely hostile to faith, somebody who, who was resistant, didn't trust Christians at all. After a conversation, time, an interaction, moved to a place of, you know what, maybe, maybe I'm a little bit more open to that. I want to offer us three things that we can do concretely to share our faith. One, an invitation, a conversation, or a prayer. It could be as simple as saying, hey, why don't you check out our live stream Sunday Mass. And in fact, if you're watching right now and you haven't, you're, you're on Facebook, you haven't hit the share button yet, go ahead and do that. Uh, share this. We want many, many people to be able to experience the message of good news. An invitation maybe to try Alpha, this safe place where people can explore questions about faith. A conversation, and probably it would involve us doing less of the talking and more listening. Hey, what's, what's burdening you right now with a friend or a family member? What's going on? I, I want to try to understand. And then without trying to fix them, perhaps at a certain point to be able to share, just say, you know what? This is the difference Jesus has made in my life. Or a prayer. You know, to simply say, is there some way that I can pray for you. And I think most people would take you up on that offer. An invitation, a conversation, a prayer. Say that with me. An invitation, a conversation, and a prayer. These, these are simple things that we can do to go public with our faith. Now, this can happen in everyday life. And just the other day, it's Thursday, I was running around uh, doing some errands. I went to the post office, uh, had to mail something, and I was totally multitasking, uh, which is me at the best of times. So I had one earbud in, and I'm uh, listening to an audiobook at double speed. Meanwhile, I'm near the grocery store, so I'm thinking, okay, what do we need here uh, to stock up on? Uh, so I'm making the list in my head, that grocery list, and it, for whatever reason, we always seem to run out of bananas. I think Father Alex, you know, this priest that I live with in our household together, he, he always, I think, I'm pretty convinced he eats more than his ration. He eats more than his one banana per day. Anyways, whenever I go, there's no bananas. So I'm making the list in my head. I'm listening to an audiobook, and I come up to the counter, and I'm like, how do I mail this thing as cheap as possible? And there's this young man at the counter. Uh, he's in his late teens, and he's just bright. He has this wonderful demeanor, this, this outgoing, joyful personality. He's smiling, and he helps me, and he gives me the envelope, and I'm starting to fill out the address. I'm still totally distracted, and, and he just says, are you a priest? Which <laughs> snapped me back to reality, and we started to have a conversation. And uh, I, I asked him at one point, are you connected to a church? And he said, you know what? Uh, I used to go to church with my mom when I was younger, but, uh, you know, over time we, we just stopped going, which is so often the case. And I just said at a certain point, you know, do you have a piece of paper? And so he tore off uh, a little bit of that receipt roll, and he, and he handed it to me, and I scribbled on it our St. website and our Twitter handle, my own Twitter handle, and I just said, listen, uh, we live stream the Mass, and I think you might enjoy it. You might find it engaging. And, and as, as we were talking, he just volunteered this completely out of the blue without my pressing. He said, you know what? I think I'd like to go back to church. I think I'd like to experience that peace. I was just blown away. You know, it was such a beautiful encounter for me. And by the way, Ben, if you're watching right now, I just want you to know that you left such an impression on me. I've been thinking a lot about our encounter the other day, and I've been praying for you. And it was just such a gift for me that it was like God was reminding me, hey, you 
Father Simon are still sent. <laughs> you know, even in the post office, you are still sent. You are called to be a missionary disciple your whole life. In all circumstances, you are still sent. All of us are still being sent to go public with our faith, to share this beautiful faith with other people around us. And just think for a minute, how many Bens are out there in your life? I mean, this, this wonderful young man, he was just waiting for an opportunity to talk. I want you to think of one person right now. Perhaps a family member, a friend, a neighbor, a colleague. Somebody who needs to know the love of Jesus. I want you to think, is there a way I can extend an invitation? Or perhaps I can initiate a conversation. Or I can say, hey, what can I pray for in your life? I challenge us all to, to embrace our call as missionary disciples and to be sent to these people who need God. I want to end uh, by honoring another young man who totally impresses me, somebody I, I deeply respect. His name is Peter. And He's actually on staff here at St. Benedict. In fact, if you're watching right now, and if this is coming through to you, uh, you can thank Peter. He's like the general overseeing this incredible team of people in audiovisual, in live stream, and all the tech. He's making it happen. Uh, Peter, I had the great pleasure of being able to celebrate his wedding. Peter and Monica, they're a beautiful couple. They're, they're both faith-filled. They're both Lebanese. Uh, they're both awesome. And so I, I just remember being at the reception, and I was blown away by Peter's groom speech. He totally captured me as he, he shared to 300 of his extended family and friends with, with great boldness, not missing the opportunity to share his faith. And actually, what I want to do is play a short clip for you from that very groom speech. So pay close attention. It's totally fun, but at the end, it's absolutely inspiring. I have this memory of being younger, and I very distinctly remember driving with my mom to pick up Michael from junior high. And I remember at that point feeling like, geez, where did all the years go? Which is a little bit sad because I would have been in grade three or four at the time. I want to thank in a special way our priests for the role you play week after week, probably without fully realizing it, in my own faith formation. I am going to hopefully have you over at some point. Monica is going to cook you a delicious meal. But in the meantime, I sent out some of my many cousins and we grabbed you something. Just something to carry you over. We have you a nice, I believe it's a chicken shawarma plate. <laughs> I also want to thank everyone at St. Benedict who helped make our wedding sacrament a beautiful experience. And I have to say, if you haven't experienced it, come one Sunday to a 9 a.m. Mass, or come to Alpha next September and see for yourself because we have an amazing church that is literally changing people's lives. I love that. Honestly, it's probably the best group speech I've ever heard, and it's not just because I got shawarma out of the deal, uh, but, but seriously, I'm sitting there listening, and he is inviting all hundreds of people to come to our church. He's inviting them to try Alpha, and I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, is he even allowed to do this? Like, this is amazing. I was so blown away by his courage and boldness to go public with his faith. Peter is a missionary disciple. And all of us are called in different ways to invite, to have a conversation, to pray, so that we too 
can share this faith of Jesus with those who need it most.